morning, sports fans. Bobby C. here as we continue our series this time around the top 10 Knicks moments at Madison Square Garden. Coming in at number 10, Lynn Sanity. Short-lived, yes, but noteworthy. It was unlike anything seen before in Knicks history, perhaps NBA history. Just six games removed from playing his first significant minutes of the season, Jeremy Lin was starting the third game of his NBA career. Do you remember against whom? Lin and the Knicks were facing off against Kobe Bryant's Los Angeles Lakers. Lin morphed a declining season into one filled with youthful hope. Lynn dropped 38 points, a career high on Kobe's Lakers that night, including a dagger three late in the fourth to send the Lakers away. February of 2012 will forever be etched in Knicks history. In at number nine, Melo and the playoffs hanging in the balance, April 8th, 2012. Carmelo Anthony's Knicks taking on the top-seeded Chicago Bulls. A seesaw contest until the fourth. That's when Carmelo Anthony went to work. Down by three with just seconds remaining, Melo launched a three over Taj Gibson, a current Nick these days, to send the game into overtime. In the extra period, the scene was similar. The Knicks were down two with Anthony face-to-face -face with Bulls forward Luel Deng in the closing seconds. He drains a game-clinching three to score his 41st. 42nd and 43rd points that Easter Sunday afternoon. I'm sure if you're old enough, you remember where you were on Christmas Day 1984. In at number 8, Knicks hosting the then-rival New Jersey Nets. Although neither playoff hopefuls, the game had a playoff feel between the two Cross River teams battling for tri-state supremacy. One season removed from becoming the first player in decades to record back-to-back 50-point -back games, Bernard King was on the fast track to orange and blue royalty. Christmas Day solidified that. King made 19 of his 30 shots and 22 of his 26 free throws to log the first 60-point game of his career, a career high. It was a losing effort for the Knicks, who didn't have much of a surrounding cast to court around King. The rising star tore his ACL later that season and never was the player Knicks fans saw in the early 80s. Regardless, King's 60-point performance earns him a spot on my list. And at number seven, a farewell fit for a King, the King of the Knicks. The New York Knicks drafted Patrick Ewing with the first overall pick of the 1985 NBA draft, and from that point forward, he was the face of the franchise. In 15 seasons, Ewing averaged 23 points and 10 rebounds to go along with three blocks. Despite never winning a championship, Ewing is revered in the Big Apple as the leader of hard-nosed teams that earn the respect of New York City. On February 8, 2003, Ewing was honored for his years in the Garden. His number 33 raised to the MSG rafters, never to be worn again by any New York Knick. In the twilight of Ewing's career, the Knicks made one more improbable NBA Finals run. By the time the Knicks met San Antonio in the Finals, an injury sidelined Patrick, but the Knicks still managed a valiant effort against the Spurs and future Hall of Famers David Robinson and Tim Duncan. The 1999 Knicks became the first eighth-seeded team to reach the NBA Finals. On June 21, 1999, they became the first eighth-seeded team to win a game in the NBA Finals. It turned out being the team's only Finals win that year, but it didn't much matter to the Garden faithful, who were more than grateful to see their Cinderella Knicks in the Finals in the first place. That moment takes the sixth spot on my list of the top ten moments in Knicks history at the Garden. And then there were five, from a team competing for a title to a team that won one. In at number five, the 1972-73 New York Knicks led by Walt Frazier, Bill Bradley, and Dave DeBusher. The trio managed to polish off the Los Angeles Lakers in five games to take home the team's second and most recent NBA championship. Before they sealed the deal in the City of Angels, though, they needed to win some crucial games at home. The Knicks moved within one victory of a title with a Game 4 win over Wilt Chamberlain's Lakers. Final score, 103-98 at MSG. DeBusher added 33 points while Willis Reed tacked on 21 and set up the Knicks for a title-clinching Game 5 two days later at the Forum. Patrick Ewing deserves a second spot on another Bobby C. Top 10 list. 
I have him here at number four with arguably his greatest individual moment. Ewing's Game 7 of the 1994 Eastern Conference Finals versus Indiana will go down as one of the greatest postseason performances in Knicks history. His 24 points and 22 rebounds all but secured the Knicks a spot in the 1994 NBA Finals. His tip slam off a missed John Starks layup with 27 seconds left in the game gave the team a one-point lead over Reggie Miller's Pacers. Ewing was just three assists shy of a triple-double, and his two blocks and two steals filled out the rest of his stat sheet. That was Ewing's time to shine. Number three was all about LJ. With the 1999 Eastern Conference Finals tied at one game apiece, the Knicks were staring at a 2-1 deficit. Down by three with just 12 seconds remaining, New York needed a miracle. Enter Larry Johnson. The ball was inbounded to LJ, who chucked up a three-pointer while making contact with Antonio Davis to get the whistle and the foul. The shot dropped. The Garden faithful rose as one, literally. Johnson made the free throw, giving the Knicks the lead. The four-point play hurt round the world. The Knickerbockers won the game and eventually the series. In the process, as we mentioned earlier, becoming the first eight seed to ever reach the NBA Finals. When you think LJ, you think the four-point play. When you think the dunk, it's immediately one man in Knicks history, John Starks. It's a play that's defined by that simple name, the dunk. With less than a minute remaining in the Knicks matchup against Chicago in the 1993 Eastern Conference Finals, the Knicks held a 91-88 lead. If they just could hold on, they would take a convincing 2-0 series lead on Michael Jordan's Bulls and be just two wins away from their first Finals appearance in two decades. Starks drove to his right off a pick set by Ewing. The diminutive guard took one dribble, two dribbles, and then took off with both feet. He was surprisingly met by Bulls center Horace Grant. Starks drove through the 6'10 defender, cocked back his left arm, and powered the ball through the net, sailing past Grant and Michael Jordan in the process. The Garden fans lost it. They just witnessed the best dunk in NBA playoff history. Starks gets the nod in the two spot, but you always have to leave the top spot for the champs. This one is an ode to Walt Frazier and Willis Reed. You know the story by now, or at least you should. In the fifth game of the 1970 NBA Finals, Reed suffered a severe thigh injury that held him out of Game 6. The injury left him very questionable for Game 7 at MSG. In dramatic fashion, Reed came barging out onto the garden floor during warm-ups before the series' final game. He took and made the game's first two shots, sending the Knicks faithful into a frenzy. Those two buckets would be Reed's only points of the game. From there, Clyde took over the spotlight. He put on one of the best performances in NBA postseason history. Frazier dazzled, thriving, conniving, and mesmerizing as he would say these days in the Knicks broadcast booth. Frazier scored 36 points and dished 18 assists to lead the Knickerbockers to a 113-99 victory and the first championship in franchise history. That's the clincher as the greatest Knicks moment ever on the Garden Hardwood. That's my list, but I'm also down for a good debate. Share your thoughts with me on social media at The Voice Bobby C. Stay with us. More open after this.